Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. I am so honored and grateful that you are tuning in. But I have to ask for your help. I'm going to pull an NPR. If you'd like to help the show, you can donate to the show at emmettmuckles.com forward slash donate. Or just visit emmettmuckles.com. Follow the link in the menu to the donate page where you can make a donation of your choice. Thank you. Welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or EmmettMuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with Emmett Muckles. Emmett and friends, if you're watching this on camera, my old face is still getting zits. Can you believe it? That's how life works. Remember, we are billionaires. 30 days after your inception, you were a billionaire. How did it happen? Mommy said, ooh, that guy looks cute. He said, okay. And they probably had a few drinks, hung out a little bit, and he shared some information, some bio information with her. What happens when you give a woman something? She makes something of it. She made you. Two became four, four became eight, eight became 16, so forth and so on. For 30 days, at the 30-day mark, you were a billion cells and you hadn't hit the planet yet. We are human beings. We are people of the sun that gives us our color, our hue. We are in the image of man. That's what we are. Here's where the issues come into play. The being part. They didn't come with a manual and we all struggle sometimes with it. And that's why we're here to spotlight people who can help you navigate that. And with that, I got the most beautiful woman in the world next to my wife. And her name is Christy Whitman. What up, Whitman? Well, th- <laughs> thanks for that compliment. I mean, you know, how do you, how do you follow that? See, you can tell I had game at the bar, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, for sure, without a doubt. So thank you. It's nice to be with you. Well, thank you very much. All right, I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you two initial questions. First one is your, is you and I are going into a building and I look at you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And just to be cordial, I strike up conversation as we get onto an elevator going up uh, seven stories. And I go, what do you do? Not laugh. That's the question. (laughs) That's the question. Oh, what do I do? I'm an author. I am a law of attraction coach. I'm an energy healer. I help people release their blocks so that they can step into their power to create what they want. Awesome. Sweet, 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 sweet. Now, the next question, because we're only at like floor two. (laughs) because <laughs> that was quick. I thought you were going to do pickup lines in the elevator no so, which, that's why I was shocked I was like what do I do oh okay. haven't you heard of me too <laughs> that's toxic I'm an old fashioned girl I'm an OG guy <laughs> stop it we're already in, in too deep <laughs> so what got you to now Christy Whitman I like the way you say my name So 25-ish years ago, I had just, you know, accomplished a lot at a very young age at 25, got the job, was engaged to be married, you know, had the success, the money, I was living in the city of Chicago, and I was depressed. Chicago will do that to you. (laughs) (laughs) I love that city, except for the winter. I live far, not far from there. (laughs) There's nothing more depressing than try then hitting a goal like going for a goal is one thing but hitting a goal and still feeling like wait a minute that wasn't the thing that actually made me happy was it a now what situation that you went through exactly it was like seriously is this what this is about i've accomplished all that i set out to at a young age what what's life about and And you were a lawyer right no but thank you for that i was a sales i was a liquor sales rep oh you're the (laughs) Even I better. lived in Chicago, went to bars and restaurants, hotels, had to drink wine and, you know, taste liquor with restaurant managers and owners. And that was my job at a young age. 
Well, that is like a dream job for somebody <laughs> who is like under like 27. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It was a lot of fun. I call up my girlfriend and go, I have to go meet the owners of Gibson's. Let's go to dinner. And we'd have this amazing <sighs> dinner. With the steaks and the seafood. The, all of it. On the on the company dime. Just so I could meet the managers and have them taste my wine. Or at least set up an appointment to taste my wine. So it was a blast. So you got to this precipice. And you're like... Yeah. Uh, all there is. You're, you, you were, only... So you were literally crossing a bridge. You got to the, to the apex of the bridge and found out there's nothing there. There's just mm-hmm. more of the same. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people, when they go through those situations, they say, look, I'm on a path. The path is here. Only it's a treadmill or a hamster wheel. So I'm just going to keep it in motion and yeah. looking forward to if I keep it in motion enough, I'll get out of this and I can enjoy the rest of my life. <laughs> but you didn't. How did you, A, know your path that you wanted to uh, divert? And, and that's what this is a lot, uh, about, it, which is the pivot. And a lot of people need to pivot in their life and they're unsure, they're afraid, they don't know, you know, they're just trying to well, figure it out. Mine came unaware. I, I did the pivot, not consciously. So I literally made a move from Chicago to Northern California, followed another guy, got there within a month, found out that he's totally a player. I always had the, just attracted the, you know, player kind of guys. Just that's who I liked. And so I got there and I was like, enough. So I'm now living in Northern California. I don't know anybody. I don't have any family, friends. And the one person I was introduced to was a, was a woman that did hair. So I had to get my hair did. And I went in and Janine was like the most joyful person I had ever met. Mm. And we're having this conversation. I'm just kind of observing her, watching her. And I finally said, okay, what do you do? And she just started laughing because she knew exactly what I meant. And she said, I meditate. Yeah. Now, Emmett, 25 years ago, it was pre-internet, pre all this stuff, right? There was some podcasts and stuff back then. Meditate. I thought of like a guy with a white beard and white long hair and a white robe sitting on a mountaintop somewhere in a yogi position, oming. That was like any reference of meditation. That's what I had. But that was your Midwest acclimate. Because if you were probably from California, that would have been nothing new. But, you know, because but that's where I was where no, but that's in my mind. That's where I was meditate. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, for someone who is from the Midwest or the East Coast and they go out to California, California is a very liberal open. It's open to a lot of energies in California. As a matter of fact, that's where I discovered Chinese medicine that changed my life. And so I can understand how you would have that that POV like what like Mm -hmm. that's some hippy dippy guru stuff (laughs) yeah I I had no yeah and so she said that's what she does she meditates so I was calling her meditation teacher as I was leaving the salon right and I got in front of her I went to her meditation teacher's house her name was Melanie and she had clinky clanky music on in the background candle oh yeah lots of angel statues, incense. And I'm thinking, what in the heck am I doing here? Right. And we sit down, not on a chair, not at a table on cushions on the floor. Yep. (laughs) That's what it's about. Yeah. And finally she's, she didn't say much to me, but she said this, she said, you create your own reality. Hmm. And when she said that something in me just opened up, something in me knew that even though I'd never heard that before. And then my mind kicked in and went, how? And I asked the question and she said, your thoughts, my thoughts. And she said, yeah, you're either repelling things from you or attracting things to you based on the way you think. And in that moment, I was like, the way I think, you know, like, okay, I know I can change my mind. I don't want to go out with that guy. I want to go out with this guy. I don't want to wear this. I want to wear that. I don't want to go here. I don't want to go there. You know, I knew I could change my mind, but my thoughts, my thoughts are my thoughts. 
And that was the opening of understanding that thoughts are not real. <laughs> so, you, you know, a lot of people don't understand this because remember back in 2007, I think it was 2007, 2006, when the secret hit and mm -hmm. they gave you the outline. And a lot of people just went with that outline. I'm going to just change careers. I'm just going to think positive on this. And I'm going to sit on this thing like the man on the mountain and it's just going to come to me. I was like, mm, that's not how physics mm -mm. works. I'm like, there's more to it. You know, I discovered, and, and I was one of those people um, to a degree. I'm more practical <laughs> than that. Yeah. But I found out the key to it, and we'll get to it in just a bit, about uh, putting this into action. So I need to know what this is. Um, you're a channel for the council. Explain that to me. So uh, my consciousness goes out and higher awareness comes in. And I literally, it's like the vessel that is me, my physical body becomes the vessel for higher consciousness to speak through. So how is that applicable in this realm? Because they have awareness. No, no, no. I know that. But how is it? How does that manifest in your life? What do you do with it? What, that's what I'm saying. It's like with clients, ah. they help, they talk through me and help clients understand where are they blocked? What do they have to understand about energy and about their thought process and about emotions and, and really how to live a better life? Because you said at the beginning, we don't come with an owner's manual. Nope. Nope. And most of us are so focused on the lack, the limitations, all the things that have conditioned us that they give a higher awareness and they bring in the concept and understanding of we are all just as human beings. We have two eyes, one nose, one mouth, right? We're blueprinted. You could tell that's a human being. That's a dog. Like there's a, there's a, <laughs> right. There's a blueprint here. That's a tree, right? You, you plant an apple seed, apple tree is going to come out, right? Pear, pear, pear tree, you know, pear, pear tree. It's like, it's blueprinted, right? Mm. Right? Yeah, I understand that. You know, what, see, every Wanna statement... Let me the flip side. No, every, every statement you're making is just opening me up for more questions. I love it. <laughs> because well. you said we have a blueprint, but some humans are vibrating so low yeah. on the frequency scale that they cannot even recognize another human being unless it is so close to their form yeah. that it's that's the only obvious to them. But I do understand something. And I've said this on the podcast numerous times. We are in a transitional phase in the omniverse, particularly in our uh, universe, which is... We are transitioning from one um, time period to another. We're going to the age of Aquarius. And it's manifesting, if you know what you're looking at, it's a more feminine age. It's a softer age. It is a more intuitive age. And that's what I think we're experiencing now is that we're transitioning through this plane into this new age because you see a great deal of femini feminization of the masculine that you was not even acceptable before. I mean, it couldn't even be, you couldn't even joke about it. And with that is going to come a whole bunch of other things, but let me get your take on what we're going through because in the last, I'd say 36 months, we've seen tremendous pivots. Where's all that coming from? Well, it's coming from like what the council said when, when the council saw a channel, when this all happened last year in 2020 and everything shut down, I was like, okay, what gives, what is the, what is this about? <laughs> right. And, and they said it is an amplification time, meaning that whatever's inside someone, if someone's so worried about money, it's going to amplify that. If someone is so worried about being alone and not having a relationship, that's going to get amplified. If someone is just hating their job, man, that is going to get amplified. 
So last year, 2020 was an amplification time to help us literally look at ourselves and become more aware. Some people never will, right? Mm. But the people that were on the cusp, they birthed and went, I'm tired of this job. I'm tired of this relationship. I don't want to live with this person anymore. Or I'm tired of being alone. I want to have a relationship. Yeah. I'm tired of struggling with money. I'm tired of doing this. You know, I want this. And it became literally a time for us to look at our contrast, what we don't want, and to start deciding what we do want. That's why it's a perfect time for the desire factor to come out because people are starting to wake up and going, you know, what do I want? So good segue. What is the desire factor? <laughs> The, well, this, besides a amazing new book that is coming out that is written by myself and the council, the desire factor is that thing, and it's different for every person. It's that thing, and it changes from, day, from time to time, but it's that desire that we get that lights us up and go, has us going, oh my God, I'd love to do that. I'd love to be that. I'd love to experience that. I'd love to create that. And it's that part of us as a co-creative, you know, with the divine, the divine plants that seed and the human goes, wow, right. yes, I want to lean into that. And it starts moving you forward. Desires are life-giving and it allows you to start moving and creating and becoming more of who you are. Yeah, That's a desire factor. So I was thinking of another channeler that I used to follow. I can't think of her name. Mm. it'll come to me. That's what happens when you get over a certain age. You know, you're like, I came into this room to do something. What did I come to do? And then you leave out and go, oh, I was going to get my keys. <laughs> <laughs> so with this book, how did, you know, uh, writing a book is, is it's an aspiration for many people. Mm -hmm. But for many people, there are a lot of things that are aspirations. But one thing that they fail to do, as the great Jim Rohn said, who motivates people, is they forget or don't put things into action. I know that this was in your head, but what was your catalyst for actually making manifesting it on this planet? Well, it's the steps that we outline in the book, really, because there are manifestation steps that people might have pieces of the puzzle, kind of like the secret is a piece of the puzzle. It's not the whole puzzle, right? Right. And so people learn these different pieces, and yet they don't know the order that they go into. Like, for example, two of the principles, one is surrender and the other one's action. If you're taking action before you surrender, you're going to hit a lot of resistance. Mm. Sometimes people put surrender first before they focus and get an alignment. So there's steps that you need to take in order to actually know what this manifestation formula is. It's like, you know, having a padlock and mixing up the numbers, the lock's not going to open. Yeah. And that's why so many people are frustrated. So for me, all of my books have been channeled. This is my seventh book. It's, they literally come through me. I get woken up in the middle of the night. I'm, I'm, I'm told to grab a pen and a paper and, you know, I go, go, go. And this book has been something that's been molding and shaping for a while. And that's why it's a perfect time for people to literally start focusing on what they want and understanding their power to create what they want and understanding the formula to do it. So they don't feel like, oh, I read the secret or I watched the secret and I put a vision board together, but it wasn't working for me. Yeah, because there was a lot of missing pieces to the information. I just had someone say, you know, I've read all the manifestation books. I even taught manifestation classes. This book takes it to a whole new level. And that's what it's really about is that teaching people now more than ever, you know, <laughs> why? And so for me, I just followed the steps in the book. And when you're so aligned, when you're so in this place of your desire factor, you cannot not take action because you're so inspired. Yeah. You know what I found out, and this is getting back to what I was talking about earlier, is I found out what the key was, and I found it by accident. So I would ask for things, and they wouldn't come. Because, you know, the mind and the subconscious mind, they work in two different kind of levels. The mind is like, rap, 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 thing, 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 thing. And the subconscious is like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> yep, uh, I'll just sit this back here. Yep, uh-huh. But the, the difference was when I asked for something and it manifested relatively rapidly was emotion. Yeah. 
when it was attached to an emotion, and I'll give you the, for instance, of my wife. So I got divorced back in 2014. It was, we were separated and I was doing my thing, you know, <laughs> I was packing the <laughs> game. the elevator thing again, right? Oh my God. I had so much fun anyway, <laughs> but I got tired of it. And so I made a thing with God, basically. I tested God. I did a job. I said, all right, I'm going to come up with all these things that I'm looking for that I really wanted that I know doesn't exist. Cause I said to myself, I'm never getting married again. And I outlined these like five things and this person shows up and I'm like, that person is not available. And God was like, hold on, watch this. <laughs> so literally I met, we are a proton and a neutron. And what I mean by that is together, there is so much power harnessed in between our union that things came, we had insurmountable things and they came together. And, you know, we had this like-minded bond, but all of it stemmed from asking from true, hear what I said? True emotion. <laughs> yes, True positive emotion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't do the negative thing. I learned that a yeah. long time ago. Even on my enemies, I wish good. And what That's happens so is all their stuff comes to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if somebody's <laughs> competing with me and they're really bad. Ab so yeah. like the things that like we're usually going for some same goal and I wish them well, like people will hurt me and I will get over and wish them nothing but prosperous and joy and love. And what happens is I look back on, I look back, you know, um, at a predetermined date or something like that. And I'm like, oh, I have all this stuff that, you know, I just kind of zoom past them is what, what happens, which is weird to me. But enough about me. Let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> I told you, man. It's yeah. just, I'm a social nerd. <laughs> Yeah. So I, yeah, I get it. I mean, so learning this information 25 years ago, literally changes my life. And I, I've been coaching on it for 20 years. Um, my first book downloaded through me and I started speaking on the contents of the book and people started ask, asking me to coach them. And I love the process of coaching. And I loved the fact that you take universal principles that are tried and true. We're not talking about theories here like these are universal principles doesn't matter if you know you're a woman or a man if you live in canada or the united states or religion you're it, it, they're spiritual universal laws mm. for every single person and when you understand vibration like what you're talking about when you send out good feeling vibes you get good feeling stuff back when you send out negative vibes you get negative stuff back and Really, it's about understanding lack and limitation that always feels bad or understanding abundance, which always feels good. And we have, all we really have influence on is our consciousness, which is our words that we say, mm. thoughts that we think, the perspectives that we hold, the feelings, the emotions we choose to process or not, and the actions that we take. So and with that, when you come across someone who needs you, and they're from, let's say, Sheboygan, Michigan. <laughs> Where'd you pull that one out? Because <laughs> I'm from Detroit. Look at the hat. Okay, okay, all right. Even all right. though I don't live there, but I'm Sheboygan, Sheboygan Michigan, because there's <laughs> nothing there but a ski resort. <laughs> and, you know, they're just not in tune or they're ignorant of these principles. And it's not something that's familiar with them. How do you acclimate them? to a new paradigm of existence. I don't. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. I'm not here to convince anybody, you know, and and the people that come to me, it, it, everything's attraction, right? Yeah. I always get, I'm a very depth coach. I'm a very, I'm a channel for the council. So the people that have come to me are those people that have read the books. They've done the seminars. They've done coaching. They've done therapy. They've read, you know, they've followed the bubblegum people out there that yeah. are like the flashy people yeah. and they want depth. 
And those are the people that I attract because, and the, and clients stay with me for a long time, because even though they're releasing and stuff, the better it gets, the better it gets. And you don't have to feel bad, you know, to feel good. You could feel even better and greater. And so I, I have tons of YouTube videos and things to educate people for years on, you know, the internet on what law of attraction is and all of my books. But when someone actually spends time with me, when they're doing um, group coaching with me, for example, or one of my classes, uh, there's no convincing. I, I don't have to, they, they're just not attracted to me if they're not open to it. Yeah. How did you, how did the channeling come into your life? Because a lot of times we're born with it. A lot of children are native channelers. And then yeah. somewhere around the age of seven or eight, you know, that second, um, that Bail. second period in your life, you lose it. Yeah. And how did it, was that with, was that your case that you had it all your life or did one day it just kind of start to manifest and you're like, what in the world is happening yeah. to me? Am I losing my mind? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That was, that was me. It was the later. So 25 years ago when I was with Melanie, my meditation teacher, one of the first things she said to me is you're a channeler. And I looked at her and I'm like, great. I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> right. No idea. And yet she channeled and she was a healer. And so my very first teachers were channelers hmm. and even I followed, you know, Abraham Hicks for a long time. That's who I was talking about. <laughs> that, okay. That's I've, I had a feeling, but I, I didn't want to put words in your mouth. So yeah, Esther Hicks. Right. And read their books, wonderful teachings. And then I got to a point where it's like, that's not helping me anymore. Right. right. I need to go deeper and, and went on their cruises with them and listened to them and all that. And then it became like, I need more depth here. I need to have a deeper understanding. And that's where I was calling the information through. And that's when they came through. All right. I'm going to ask you, I know you gave me a, a whole bunch of a synopsis, but I just feel what people are. And I ask those questions. <laughs> I love it. You're real. So with that, you know, how can someone find their own communication channel and intuition for the uh, ascended masters? Well, it's the first principle I talk in the desire factor. It's the principle of alignment. I mean, if you are not in aligned with the very breath that's breathing you, the life that loves you and adores you, right? It's like we all have this beautiful treasure chest above our heads. And by tapping into it, we have everything that we need energetically from support to love, to prosperity, to abundance, to well-being. And it's all available to us. It's a very personal, just because somebody else has it, right? It doesn't mean we can't, it doesn't mean they're taking it from us. It's all very personal. It's very individual. And mm. it's about us receiving it and connecting with it. And when we do that, we're in alignment. And when we feel that alignment, we feel good because I was talking before about the blueprint, right? Well, we're energetically blueprinted to have health and well-being, to have abundance, to be successful and to have loving and supportive relationships. This is our divine design. And so when we align with that, <laughs> I'm silly. <laughs> you guys can't, they can't see you, can they? <laughs> they will be able to. They but... will. <laughs> yes, exactly. All that. Yeah. I mean, that you know, the energy that literally creates worlds is breathing us. It's like the sun with the sun rays. We're not the sun, but we're the ray, right? We're, we have the individualized consciousness from the divine, you're a ray, I'm a ray. And when we align with that energy of life loves us and life is for us, we're aligned. So how are you delivering your content in um, person to person? Or how are you connecting with people in this time? I mean, things are lifting now. But I've been asking all my guests, how are you connecting? Are you doing Zoom meetings? Are you doing mm -hmm. meetups online? Are you doing things for groups? Or is it just one-on-one? -on -one? What's your platform? So I do very limited one-on-one, -on -one, but I do a lot of group because I just have a bigger um, 
because you balling like that. Uh, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I've had yeah. an online business since 2006. And so I've always been online. And it's yeah. funny because I was at an event to get my speaking gig because my kids are getting a little bit older to get my speaking out there to be able to travel a little more literally when shutdown happened. And I was like, okay, universe, I got the message, stay home. Yeah. So I literally just in the last year, I mean, the business has grown, more people are needing support. It, it was truly an honor to have the people that were in group programs. There's a, a course that I teach with the council called quantum energy mastery. It's like really learning how to step into owning your masterfulness of energy, being your own energy master. And I had people that were more happy and more expanded and feeling better than they ever have. Mm. While most people are out there suffering. Yeah. I, you know, we were talking um, pre the show, like I said, I have been more pr like, the first month I was like, what's going to happen? And then my life got extremely busy. <laughs> like just like almost have, I have anxiety a little bit because there's so much to do. <laughs> and other people were just like, yeah, I gained 35 pounds. I'm like, nope, I lost 12. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's like you said, it's about energy and mindset. Like, cause I have the expectation that I am going to be, I like to be busy that I'm going to be busy and I'm going to be fruitful. I am not multiplying any because I'm too old for that. <laughs> yes. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know, like you said, it's about your mindset and mine. You know, I went through Eckhart Tolle. Um, what is her name again? Why can't Abram Hicks, Esther, Esther Hicks, Esther yeah. Hicks, you know, Abraham. uh, I, kind of dissect it for a while, the secret. And I was just like, something's missing. And for a while I was on that search for what was missing. Cause it just didn't make sense. Yeah. But you know, and I'm glad I am so grateful for individuals like yourself who are not afraid to speak out and say these things because you know, uh, not like 10 years ago, it was probably a little different. Before The Secret, it was kind of like, what? what? <laughs> yeah. I was coaching people on Law of Attraction well before The Secret came out. But when The Secret came out, it was like more people wanted to learn about it. Right. It became almost like a conversation in, you know, mass media, right? It did. Right. Oprah, ha oh, Oprah has them on, right? Mm. Oprah had The Secret, Larry King, you know, it was everywhere. It was yeah. like, it was a buzzing conversation that was like, yeah, I'm teaching this, living this for years. All right. I'm going to diverge because I, I, I was talking about this about a year ago and then it just kind of faded out. But there's some things I want to get your take on. There's two things I'd like to get your take on. One is the Me Too movement. And B, why was it that George Floyd's demise was the catalyst for change hmm. versus it had been happening right before everybody's eyes, but no one, it didn't really kick in until um, Mr. Floyd's demise. So those two things. Again, what the council said, it was amplification time, right? You've got all these people that are now at home. They're in fear. There's uncertainty, Right. There, there's so much that it, it was kind of like a, it was a murmur going on. It was in, it was in everybody. It was in every city. It was in mass consciousness, this murmur, right? And then the pandemic hit, right? And everybody's stuff is up because there's uncertainty. Am I going to have a job? Am I not? Am I, my marriage going to work out? Can I leave the house? What could I do? Are my kids safe? Can you know, now I got to homeschool my kids. You know, there, <laughs> there's so much going on. Emotions are flying high. And then that happens, that hits and it's videotaped. Right. Mm. And people are seeing it and people are just like enough, you know, like when you've like, it's like the straw that the broke the camel's back. Yeah. I believe that that was the straw. Yeah. It was a perfect storm. It was a perfect combination of something that every human being, didn't matter where you live, this is like a universal thing, this pandemic, right? 
And some handled it really well. Like me, I'm like, cool. I get to stay home. Yeah, me too. Awesome. <laughs> right. I got an online business. We're good. My husband's like works with me in my business, but he's like, hun, you keep doing what you're doing. I got the kids. Cool. Right. I get to spend more time with my kids. They're not having to run here and run there. This is awesome. Right. We get to watch. I get an excuse to watch movies. This is like awesome. Right. I love sitting on the couch and watching movies. And it was like an excuse, like, cool, let's watch Netflix and chill, right? I was like, that was awesome. <laughs> this, this, in the streets You know, you, married women don't say Netflix and chill. That, well, that, that is a single person <laughs> thing, okay? Stop it. <laughs> well, we chilled. And the streets were empty. And I loved it. The grocery stores, oh. there was, like, lines of people, you know? It's like I'd go and get my tea every day, get my little, you know, I'd go to Pilates because my Pilates instructor had a place little place at her house and we would have a great time i mean i was but then there was the extreme other people desperate hmm. you know just emotions they've never dealt with i've been dealing with my emotions for years because it's part of my growth i'm dedicated to growth to the other people that were just stuffing it down and stuffing it down and stuffing it down until all of a sudden it starts coming up and they can't ignore it anymore because they're freaking out yeah and then you have something like this happen where you know, people are like tired of it. And that's what, I mean, I did find it quite humorous because everybody's in lockdown for a pandemic. Nobody's supposed to go out. Nobody's supposed to get, you know, six feet and, you know, next to each other. And then all of a sudden there's protesting. I'm like, wait, are we not doing, are we not doing the pandemic right. anymore? Like, is it, wait, what happened? <laughs> yeah. You, you know? know, because like I said, the first question that I asked you about, because be right before that, Me Too was a big, big thing. And then when that happened, it kind of went, it lost its steam. Yeah. What was, in your opinion, the Me Too movement? It's, it was, again, long overdue for a, a murmur of women that felt that they were being pushed down. They were not equal. They were not being heard. They were being manipulated. They were being controlled. And they, they, women didn't have a voice. They were afraid. Yeah. And then here it starts. It's like, it just takes one woman to stand up and go, I'm not afraid of the consequences of what's going to happen. I have to speak my truth. And then when she did, all these other women that were like, oh my God, I've been holding this back for so long. I, I, me too. Yeah. Right. And then it was like that once one person has enough courage to say, this is wrong. This, this is against my human rights, whether I'm a female or a black man, right? This is against my human rights. And it's not okay to be treated like this. This is based on lack and limitation and separation and victim consciousness and suffering. We're in a changing energetic world right now. And that old stuff of pushing people down, control, manipulation, keeping them struggle and drama and separation. It's not going to be what moves into this next age. Yeah. Like you were saying, it's like, it's about oneness and equality and, and union. And, and it's the namaste. It's like the divine in me respects and honors and acknowledges the divine in you. Because if each person could literally find that alignment with themselves you can look at your brothers and your sisters knowing that, oh, you're divine and you're divine and you're divine and I'm divine. We're all divine. Wow. You're, you, because you have abundance doesn't mean I can't. Right. Yeah, people right? people don't get that. People think right. that there is a lack out here. Mired in it. And another thing, people, um, we've been programmed to want more than we need. You hear what I said? To want more than we need. Because I realized something, and it took me a long time to realize this, that I need what I need. What I want will come. Mm -hmm. Very well said. And a well, lot that of people don't get think it. Of, and think about that. When the whole pandemic, all the people that were freaking out about the toilet paper, I kept scratching my head going, does this flu thing, this virus, like, does it make give people the runs? Like, why are we freaking out over toilet paper? 
right? Because... It was that oh, horrid, got to take mine, right? I was like, I kept scratching my head going, can y'all just take a few rolls? I mean, do you need to take all of them? Can you just go on Amazon? They have like temporary bidets. Right. <laughs> squirt, squirt, squirt. <laughs> But, you know, it's like the the common sense <laughs> isn't so common, especially when you're out of alignment. Well, you know, I am a trainer by profession and I train everyone from 18 to I'm basically in the adult learning field. And there is something that was shown to me quite blatantly. There is no such thing as common sense. What's common mm -hmm. to me is not common to you, <laughs> especially with certain Gen X, millennial, and versus uh, what? Are, what am I? Uh, I'm not Gen X. No, Gen Z, Gen X, and Gen Y. They have very different views. All right, so thank you for that commentary, and it was <laughs> very insightful. How Any can time. people reach you? Well, you could go to the desirefactor.com and if you get the book, there's like $900 worth of bonuses. You get actually four sessions with myself and the council that take you through the principles of the book. Oh, snap. Yeah. yeah. There's a right away when you go and order it from the desirefactor.com, you get three processes from the council that are just like dynamite. One is like a hologram. And you literally take out and put in like from an energy. It's amazing. It's like, talk about creation. Okay. So you go to the desirefactor.com. My main website is christywhitman.com. All right. And that spell C H I. Wait a minute. C H R I. <laughs> How about I do that? <laughs> Why don't you knock out your own name? You know, because uh, those. Actually, any. Any way you spell Christy Whitman, you get there. So it doesn't matter if you put it with a K or an I or an I-E or in two T's and then Whitman, it doesn't matter. It's and I'm Christy looking right Whitman. at it when I did it too. <laughs> oh, man. You well, know, that's what, happens when you, that's what happens when you eat right before an interview. Your brain shuts down. <laughs> anyway, I want to really thank you um, so much for being a guest on the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. And let's let's revisit each other. You pick a date in the future. Give it at least three months and let's revisit each other. I love it. Love oh. to come back. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we conclude. I want you to remember something, that you are a billionaire. I said it at the beginning of the podcast and I'm going to say it at the end. Also, if you'd like to donate, you can go to emmettmuckles.com forward slash donate. Da! But you are a billionaire. And what I need you to do is live in love. You start off in love, but you get separated because you get on this plane that doesn't have a manual. And sometimes your mentors didn't have a manual either. And somewhere along the line, their firmware got corrupted. That infected you. The things that take away from you corrupted you. The things that hit your emotions made these little dents and they stuck with you. However, subconscious they stuck with you and left you out of love with yourself. You can't love anybody unless you love yourself first. So there's a practice that I do, which is every night as I am drifting off, I am laying down and I say to the heavens and those that have far greater connection to the universe than I, I say thank you. And I go off a litany of things that I am so grateful for. Like I am grateful for the fact that I can talk to you. Me as a man of color can talk freely to the people of this planet and give you good things. But I need you to stay in love with the physical the mental and the spiritual. And how do you do that? The next time you go take a shower, when you get out, dry yourself off. And then as the moisture is permeating the towel, drop the towel, be naked, be nude, be in your God body. Walk up to the mirror and inspect yourself. Now I want you to really inspect because that is a miracle. We have not been able to manufacture 
from our consciousness with our hands, a you, or anything like you. I want you to revel in that. I want you to look at that little chicken wing, that little thing that flaps. I want you to look at the back fat, the moles, the receding hairline. That is what you are. Someone loves you. You may not even know it because you're so busy waiting to get validation of love by loving someone else when you should start with yourself. Get in the mirror. Get to them close to the mirror. And I want you to open your eyes like buck them. And I want you to turn the light switch on and off. And you're going to see this little thing in the middle of your eye contract and expand. And it is just like nebulae in the sky. As above, so below. Everything is fractal. When you're out in the universe, you see these dots. And then if you come down into or these balls of light and these little things floating around, as you get closer to the earth and you get closer to you, if you were to zoom in on yourself, you see yourself as a dot. Then you see yourself as a human. Then if you go inside, you'll find out that there are cells that are universes and galaxies within themselves. As above, so below. You keep going down, you'll get to the atomic level. As above, so below. We are all fractal beings. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. That's all it is. Your consciousness manifest. Remember, when you're in that mirror, say one simple sentence and say it with meaning like I do. I love you. Till next time, I love you all. Peace.